Hello, and thank you for joining us uh, for another One Health Talk on an important zoonosis. With this series, we hope to explain why protecting animals and the environment ultimately protects human health. And today is a bit of a special topic for bird owners and handlers with our uh, zoonosis today being psittacosis. So as mentioned before, this is a One Health topic. One Health is the concept of the connection between human and animal health, as well as environmental health. And today's example, we will briefly introduce what is it? How common is it? How do we get it? What are the symptoms? And in animals, uh, as well as in humans, and then most importantly, how can it be prevented? So what is psittacosis? Psittacosis is also called parrot disease or parrot fever, and psittacosis comes from the uh, species group. It was first described in parrots. It's a bacterial disease uh, caused by chlamydia psittaci, and it typically just infects birds, but not just parrots, also domestic birds. And uh, human cases in most cases have come from uh, pet ownership, as well as in uh, slaughterhouse workers, for example. So how common is it? As said, it infects mostly birds. Uh, it can occasionally also infect other animals. And uh, of a recent publication here, the global prevalence for chlamydia in birds was estimated to be 19.5%. So that is quite a lot of birds globally who have been infected with this. Uh, there are differences in how prevalent this is uh, and the highest prevalences are found in places where many birds are gathered closely together. So uh, illegal wildlife traffic um, has a very high risk of uh, sharing this disease. How do we get it? Um, this bacterium is shed in droppings as well as nasal discharge. Um, we mostly get it through inhalation. So this is transmitted most commonly via the air, um, but it can also be transmitted by direct contact, so beak to mouth contact. Uh, and rarely the transmission can happen from human to human. Uh, what is important is that not all infected birds will show signs of it. So they will go undetected. So how does it look in birds? As said, they can be asymptomatic, showing no signs. But when they are sick, we do see swollen eyes. Um, they're depressed. They don't want to eat. And they're losing weight. They're fluffing their feathers and then discharge from the nose and or breathing abnormalities. Um, in humans, this disease generally causes mild sickness with fever, chills, headache, muscle pains, and dry cough. It can also cause a severe atypical pneumonia. Uh, it is very likely underdiagnosed, so more prevalent in humans than we know because the symptoms are so unspecific. So it feels like any flu. At higher risk are people working in poultry facilities, bird owners, veterinarians, um, and people having contact with uh, dense groups of birds uh, and feather dust in enclosed spaces, so to speak. So how do we prevent it? It's quite similar for uh, humans and animals. Good hygiene and cleanliness is always uh, first, keeping enclosures and food containers clean daily, positioning enclosures to avoid the spread of feathers and droppings, uh, and most importantly, avoiding overcrowding, isolating and treating any birds that are sick, and using 
personal protective equipment, gloves and masks in these spaces where feather dust may be flying to avoid inhalation of this. When cleaning surfaces should be wet down again to avoid the flying of these dust particles that contain the bacteria. And of course, as always properly wash your hands and all the items after cleaning. And this is the end of today's talk. These sources came from the uh, CDC websites. Uh, we hope you found this helpful. Please stay in touch and don't hesitate to ask us any questions or feel free to suggest future zoonosis talks. Thank you. Stop. <laughs> uh.